He's repeatedly demonstrated his ignorance of the most basic facts of international affairs. He's promoted a delusional and narcissistic view of the world, one in which he seems to feel that the power of his personality in negotiations could redirect the course of other nations, remake or supplant treaties, and contain those tyrants that he doesn't actually embrace. He would be a destabilizing force that would undercut American leadership instantly and for generations to come. Trump is the worst major party candidate this republic has ever produced. Not to put too fine a point on it. Um, but to the editors of Foreign Policy, there is also uh, good news this year. Quote, fortunately, not only is Trump opposed by a worthy candidate, but his opponent on foreign policy and national security issues, all of the areas we cover here at Foreign Policy, she is one of the best qualified candidates this country has produced on those issues since World War II. Foreign Policy Magazine today making their first presidential endorsement ever in the history of Foreign Policy Magazine. Last week, the Obama administration accused the Russian government of hacking the Democratic National Committee, along with a bunch of other American political institutions and individuals. Uh, the Director of National Intelligence and the Department of Homeland Security released a joint statement accusing the Russian government of, of stealing and leaking the emails that they hacked. That statement came out on Friday. But then last night at the debate, Donald Trump said that maybe he thinks there was no hacking after all. I notice any time anything wrong happens, they like to say, the Russians, the Russians, she doesn't know if it's the Russians doing the hacking. Maybe there is no hacking, but they always blame Russia. And the reason they blame Russia is because they think they're trying to tarnish me with Russia. I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. She's saying Russia, 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 but I don't, maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? You don't know who broke in to DNC. Turns out we, we sort of do know as a country who broke in to the DNC and hacked those emails. Turns out not only do the U.S. intelligence agencies know it, but Donald Trump apparently knows it too. NBC News has now reported today, based on an anonymous source, that both candidates, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, got classified intelligence briefings in their capacity as presidential candidates that specifically included information on Russia and Russia's attempt to interfere with 2016 elections through hacking. A senior U.S. intelligence official tells NBC News today, quote, to profess not to know at this point is willful m misrepresentation. The intelligence community has walked a very thin line in not taking sides, but both candidates have all the information they need to be crystal clear. Joining us now is Malcolm Nance. He's a former Navy intelligence officer and a counterterrorism expert. He's also author of a new book on the 2016 election and hacking and Russia. It's called The Plot to Hack America, How Putin's Cyber Spies and WikiLeaks Tried to Steal the 2016 Election. The man is timely, if not anything else. Malcolm Nance, you're the perfect person to talk to about this. Thanks for being with us tonight, my friends. Nice to see you. It's my pleasure. So, Malcolm, um, I don't take you know, intelligence agencies at face value. For one thing, they never have to show their work. They work in secret. I certainly don't always believe anonymous sources, but is it even arguable at this point that the Russians aren't behind this hacking? Do you believe the intelligence agencies when they say they're clear that it's the Russian government? Let me put it into perspective. When the intelligence community says, we have high confidence that Russia is behind the cyber elements which have hacked the DNC, the DCCC, and many other elements uh, of the Democratic Party in this campaign. High confidence means that we have a belief that there is 90 percent or higher. We kill people with good confidence, which is 75 percent or higher, in drone strikes when we have a pretty good you know, targeting solution on these people. So when the President of the United States comes out, the Director of National Intelligence, the Director of Homeland Security says, we have high confidence than the consensus of the 19 uh, intelligence agencies and principally the CIA and NSA who are responsible for determining this, they know who has done this, and it is Russia. Is there a scenario in which it makes sense to you that that Donald Trump would be denying or disputing Russia's involvement, suggesting either that there's no hacking or if there is, that there's no reason to believe that it's Russia. How does, that make, how does it make sense to you? 
Well, it makes sense to Donald Trump because I really believe, and I've, I've written about this extensively in my book, which is a book mainly about Vladimir Putin, the FSB slash KGB, and how they have co-opted Donald Trump in his campaign and have actually been carrying out a cyber and political warfare operation against the United States. Uh, Donald Trump, over the years, who has been inundated with, with friendship from oligarchs in Russia, people with real money, not fake billionaires. These are real billionaires with hundreds of billions of dollars. And he has bought into their entire ideology. He has bought into their political beliefs. He has bought into the belief that they are, like, like him, are the saviors of Western civilization against Islam. And for Trump to buy into that, that requires him to give up all of the traditional standings that the United States has had for 70 years, a belief in the systems of NATO, a belief in the European Union and the free markets in the West, and that Russia should be allowed to do anything it wants. Between him and his aides who surround him, all of whom have uh, links to Russia, they have, have either wittingly or unwittingly been co-opted. I don't believe that he's an agent of Russia, like former CIA director or deputy director Mark Morales said. I believe they are unwitting assets of Russia, what Lenin used to call useful idiots. Malcolm Nance, author of the new book, The Plot to Hack America, How Putin's Cyber Spies and WikiLeaks Tried to Steal the 2016 Election.